welcome back everyone. Today we're back in the AT7 again. Have a few battle, few of these tank battles to, to go through. Three good battles in the AT7 so far. There's that SC-100Y that I said I have that we haven't quite played with yet. Now, we're going to be making a terrible joke this episode. <laughs> have you ever been stuck between a rock and a hard place? Yes? Well, you've probably been stuck between me, this tank, and a rock. Yes. <laughs> no, that's an absolutely terrible joke. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see why I thought of that in a minute, though. We're going to be hiding behind a rock this whole episode. episode. Yeah, just sitting there, doing nothing. Hide behind a rock. No, we're actually going to be taking a lot of hits and shooting a lot of shells, but... Well, we're not going to go too far. <laughs> this is the one of the first battles I had in this thing. This is probably the fourth or fifth battle, actually. This one here. This battle actually took place before the last one that I showed. Um, I just wanted to get the other one going first because there's a little bit more action in it. Wanted to get you guys liking this tank first. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to hide that hatch on top. As you can see, that's an absolutely huge target. But remember, this thing has 200 millimeters of armor pretty much everywhere else. And its gun is mounted on the right side there. So all we need to do is peek that, right, that gun around the corner on the right side and hide that hatch on top and then hopefully will be pretty much indestructible. And that point gets pretty much proven in this match here. One thing I've noticed with this tank so far though is that when it takes hits to its center mass, penetrations to its center mass, it very, very often, hello T29, I know you have an incredibly tough turret. Uh, what ends up happening most of the time is I lose at least one crew member. So it seems like, assuming that World of Tanks based it exactly on real life design, which is not the case, Ooh, that one went through. It seems like they know what intended this tank to take direct hits from the front. That's silly. Why would anything ever penetrate the front of this tank? Oh, we shoot the rock. Ah, hitbox is just a little bit off, I guess. Or else we got a little bit unlucky. Let's see if we can only peek our gun around this corner this time. I'm still over to the right a little more than I'd like to be. We hit the top of that super pershing there. That's where I always aim. At any distance, I aim for the turret. The turret has so many weak points, it's not even funny. And I feel like I could drive one and be so well at it. I, I don't know. I'm not going to buy one for myself. I bought one as a gift, actually, once. I'm not going to buy myself one. But I just feel like, for some reason, that nobody plays it right. I don't know. Maybe my experience, if I actually had some experience in it, I'd feel differently about that. I tried to shoot low on the, on the T29 there. I'm trying to hit below its turret. That's a pretty hard shot to make. Uh, but it seems like all the Super Pershing drivers show their sides very often. And then they they drive in a straight line towards you. They should move at a slight angle. Not so much that they expose their sides, but enough that it's a moving target left and right to try to shoot the hatches on top of their turret. It, I don't know. It's, why would you ever sit still in Super Pershing? You have armor, but you have to know how to use it. Oh man, we're taking a lot of hits here. We're getting tracked a lot, but that's about it. <laughs> there's quite a few tanks up there shooting at us. If I remember correctly, there's an IS-6 up there, eventually. Uh, but this T-29 alone, it's going to be the hard thing. The Super Pershing has a squishy turret, as far as I'm concerned. Just because it has so many weak points, but the T-29... Mm, that's going to be a whole other story. They just have that commander's hatch. You know, the super stuck the back of his turret out. The back of its turret seems to be very well armored. The side toward the back, I've shot that thing a few times in various tanks, including my T95, and it always bounces. There we go. There's, there's an IS. No IS-6, though. I'm pretty sure he makes an appearance eventually, but maybe I remember incorrectly. We'll see. IS though it seems to be a little bit tough to get through. A lot of his, a lot of these shots are being absorbed by his track though. There we go. We got him that time. Now he's tracked <laughs> completely. We'll keep our attention focused on him now. Ow. Hmm. As you know, as you guys may know, I work at Wendy's. Yay, lucky me. No, not exactly a fact I'm proud of. Uh, but there's a few things that drive me insane. There, they're starting to bug me. The people say it's like it's a cheesy cheddar burger not a cheesy cheeseburger <laughs> and actually one of my managers started laughing at me the day because it's like it's not a cheesy cheeseburger <laughs> I, 
I mean, when you go through the drive-thru, everybody in the store can hear you over the headset. It's just that helps everybody know what to do. Helps you know what a person's ordering. And if you don't know Wendy's is, by the way, it's essentially McDonald's. The same kind of idea. Uh, but everybody in the store can hear you when you go through the drive-thru at all fast food restaurants. And that's so that everybody can get your order correct. Sometimes we'll question the person, the drive-thru person, and how they took the order. Be like, are you sure they wanted that? Didn't they want this other thing instead? Or didn't they say something special about it? And then they'll double check and oftentimes it'll be an error corrected. Um, but if you're asked something about something again at the drive-thru, when you get to the window after leaving the speaker, then that's probably why. It's probably second guessed about what you said. Um, but let's see, I have a lot of people asking for McDonald's items. Oh, a KB5, this could be a, a tough one. I got, I got lucky with that shot there. I think I hit his weak points little gun turrets or whatever on top and now he's showing a side that's just plain dumb why would you show your side in a kb5 you got this amazing armor covering three quarters of the front of your tank yet you're going to show me your side remember you can't hide behind vehicles like that anymore i think he's trying to hide behind that uh that car there but remember you can shoot through stuff like that now so any barrels you see that little i guess that's a dog house there on the ground in front of me that car you can shoot through them you do lose a little bit of potential penetration but usually it goes through and does its job <laughs> uh, I've killed a few guys like that it seems like they always forget I've had a few situations where I've shot at people and I was like oh yeah I could do that <laughs> I just got lucky with it or I remembered at the last moment when my life depended on it that I could I was trying to aim around a few obstacles a few times and then I decided, wait, what am I doing? Just, just shoot right through it and finish them off. Uh, but, uh, yeah. At Wendy's, you can tell who's worked in fast food before and who hasn't. The people who haven't are just so impatient and grumpy and, ugh, it's, it's not fun. So just, you know, if you have a problem with your order, just chill. Just be like, hey, I would like this like this. Can I get this instead? And they'll be like, yeah. You made, it, you made it wrong, whatever. Well, yeah, we'll fix it for you. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, we've had people that come in, I didn't want to catch up my burger, and they slam it down on the counter and start yelling at the cashier's face, and it's like, wow, relax. Our manager had to ream them out for that. Like, I'm sorry if you can't come in here and, and be grown up about it, and we don't need your business. It's pretty much what she said. Uh, but uh, I can't wait to get out of there. Can't wait to finish school, get back to there. That'll be a whole lot better than this, I think. Uh, career change for me, I was going to go for a computer programmer analyst, then move on to advanced video game programming and potentially, potentially make games potentially like World of Tanks here. Um, but now it's looking like I'm going to be working on factory equipment and stuff like that, actually installing, maintaining a little bit of programming of those. That should be neat. Hopefully that goes well. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.